When you have the lawsuit, this is the court, folks. As a judge, I swear to support the Constitution of the United States. United States means two or more people coming together in a closed area. Doesn't this have thing four corners? It's four, this is a closed area. It's called paper. It carries the cargo words. The words have terms and definitions. This book not only has a sentence, but every word in this book is defined and has a syntax, quantumized definition. Every word is accounted for in this book, including a lot more words. It took Russell and I six years, 12,000 hours. We had a team of guys breaking up A, B, C, D, E. And of all the two million words in the English language, we got 720 words that are syntax. That's it. Pretty simple. Average person has a 12,000 word vocabulary, you only need 720 to learn syntax. And in 99% of the cases, you use less than 50 different words in an entire lawsuit to win your case. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. It's, it's so simple. Once you get it, it's, it's mathematical. But this is the court. This is the contract between you and the judge. The courtroom is irrelevant. The seals that are hanging on the walls are irrelevant. This flag is the correct sentence structure communication syntax flag, which advertises that this is correct. You place a postage stamp up on your corner. You sign across it. That makes you the postmaster transporting the vessel of the document to the clerk of the court, which is the port of the court. Mm -hmm. She puts her stamp on it. When she puts her stamp on it, you sign your name across her stamp, making you a postmaster of not only your paperwork and your vessel, but now you're in contract with the port, port authorities of the court, because it's a courthouse, which is a foreign vessel in dry dock, so you've entered a foreign vessel. Now you're the postmaster and clerk of a foreign vessel in dry dock. Now you've got a 24 karat gold bonded, document that has to go in the court. But if you're, going to, if you're going to sign the stamp on the front, you have to also endorse the back of the top of the cover page because that's called an endorsement. How many of you can cash a check at the bank without endorsing your check? Nobody. Because if you take the document and you roll it up, when you unroll it, the top of the back, when they seal those scrolls, they would put a seal on it. That was the endorsement. And that, that gave the document its value. And not only that, this book is bonded together. When I went to court in 1997, I used to have three ring notebooks with my paperwork in it. I went to testify. The judge says, what are you doing? He says, well, I'm testifying to my book. He says, that's all loose paper. He says, you got to have a bonded book in order to be an author with the authorization to talk about the authority of your authentic document. And it's a document. That's why you get a docket number when it, the vessel comes to the court and it gets docketed. It's a staple considered? No. Staples, maritime law staples is not bonded together. However, you use a merit, you put the staple as a mechanical device to hold the papers together and then take super glue, put a drop on it, and the capillary attraction will, will fuse the papers together. Uh, you can have three forms of bonding. You can glue it, you can stitch it, and you can rivet it. I sent Janet Reno a letter charging her with treason against the United States, and she sent me back a letter, two-page letter, with six three-eighths of an inch brass rivets. There were six big, thick brass rivets to hold two sheets of paper. She says, you want bonded documents? Here's a bonded document. <laughs>